Hi BookTube, Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Uh, wanted to come to you today and uh, just going to try something a little different. I had been uh, putting some videos up here recently and I've had some comments left on my uh, videos and one of them, uh, Peg from the History Shelf, had asked me if there was a uh, bookshelf tour coming soon in the to the channel and uh, I've been mulling it over. I wasn't going to do it just yet because I wanted to get my upstairs, uh, the upper room, I wanted to kind of kind of get it in shape before I showed off anything, but um, that might be a little ways in the future. But I thought, you know, I could probably do a bookshelf tour right here with the, the books that are always in the background of all of my, um, of my videos. And so... Um, Peg, I originally told you I wasn't going to do one uh, just yet, but I, I uh, changed my mind, I guess. And um, the, the books that I've got down here, almost all of these I have not read yet. And um, there, there's a reason why. Uh, like I said in earlier videos, my space upstairs is very limited. And um, so around Christmas time, what I did was... Uh, because that's our storage room, we got storage totes in there. I took all the books that I had read and I put them to the back of the storage room uh, on the shelves that are kind of, they're, they're pretty much buried by the storage totes. And um, I pulled the ones that I had not read more towards the front of that room upstairs. And um, the ones down here are all books I have not read yet because I didn't want to be digging clear to the back of the, uh, the room upstairs all the time. So uh, just to... Keep it so I could get to fresh books a little bit easier. That's that's why I have these books down here. And so I'm not going to be able to tell you a ton because I haven't really read very many of them. Uh, but I, like I said, I did that on purpose so I could get you know readily get to some new material to read. But um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to I'm not I'm not going to show the top two shelves. Those are all fiction books, and as I've explained before, I'm more of a nonfiction guy. Um, I guess you can leave in the comments if you really want me to show the ones that are up on the top two shelves. I can. That's not a problem. So just leave a note if you want me to, and I will. But um, I'm going to show off the nonfiction shelves. And uh, so this is the, the well, let's see, third shelf on the, on the left bookcase. And so let's get started. So first on the, uh, on the shelf is The Story of American Freedom by Eric Foner. Now I've read um, a recent book by Eric Foner. It was on the, um, it was called Gateway to Freedom. It was on the Underground Railroad. It was really good. Um, he is a uh, historian of slavery and uh, the, the Reconstruction Movement. And this book, yeah, this book brings it from, you know, just talking about freedom from revolution into the present. Uh, but this is a book by Eric Foner. Uh, next book in line is A World Undone, The Story of the Great War, 1914 to 1918, and that is G.J. Meyer. Now, I like uh, World War I. I teach a, a pretty good-sized unit with my kids at school, and they always enjoy that, and I get to take the kids to the World War I Museum. And so one of the things I wanted to do was uh, build up my World War I library. I, uh, I think I do a good job with the unit, but I just... You know, just this being a a part of history that I'm I'm kind of fascinated with, very interested in. I wanted to build up that part of my library and get some more books, and so here is one of them. Now I've shared before that the Civil War is one of my passions. I teach that with my eighth grade kids, and I've come to really love the Civil War unit. It's um, just all kinds of complicated <laughs> going on in the nation and and um, anyway this book goes right along with that with that whole issue the state of Jones the small southern county that seceded from the Confederacy uh, by Sally Jenkins and uh, John Stoffer and this book if you remember not that long long ago uh, they made a movie out of it and it was a pretty good movie um, I have read part of this book. I have not read the whole thing. I had gotten it from the library, started it, and then put it down because I got busy, and then took it back to the library. And I thought, you know what, that was a pretty good, 
it was a good movie and pretty good stories. You know, I didn't get very far, but it was pretty good to the point that I got. And so I went ahead and bought the book myself so I would have it in my collection. The next book in line is Gettysburg, The Last Invasion by Alan C. Gelzo. Um, uh, um, Dr. Gelzo is a professor at Gettysburg College. Uh, he does a lot of stuff on Lincoln and the Civil War. Uh, really fascinating teacher. I, I love listening to him. I found all kinds of talks that he's done online, and I've, I've uh, done the oh, great courses on Lincoln, and he was the teacher of that, and he's just a really good teacher, and I enjoy listening to him, and can't wait to get a hold of this book and, and get to reading on it. Here's a book that I found in St. Joe at one of the, the bookstores, uh, A Diary from Dixie, Mary Boykin Chestnut, and uh, of course that's one of the, one of the better uh, diaries from the, uh, from the Civil War, and I think that'll probably be a pretty fascinating read, definitely from a, obviously a Southern point of view, but um, a little bit different than my belief system. <laughs> And uh, it'll be interesting to, to read that. Now here's another one, another biography from a Civil War era, Thaddeus Stevens, The Scourge of the South by uh, Fawn Brody. Now I'd read a, another book by Brody that was on Thomas Jefferson. That was a very good biography. Um, and I'm hoping that this one's going to be the same. I'm guessing it, it will be, it'll be good just like the Jefferson one was. But... Um, Again, Civil War. It's fa uh, fascinating. Matter of fact, this whole shelf is full of Civil War stuff. Uh, this is Essays on the Civil War and Reconstruction by William A. Dunning. Introduction by David Donald. Pretty famous uh, Lincoln teacher, that introduction was. But uh, this is an older book. That's, that's another thing you'll see with my collection is... Um, Pam, I got to tell you, over there at the history shelf, I am a little jealous. I think any book lover would love to have uh, new books in their collection and have nothing but new books, and that's what your collection looks like. I'm very, very impressed. I was watching your your shelf tour from the bottom shelf uh, earlier today, and that was what I told my wife. I was like, "Holy cow! I wish I had that. <laughs> I wish I had the the ability to get uh, get those books. It, it's really nice. Mine's mine's more of a a hodgepodge collection. I, I get them from, um, I, buy, I do buy them new every once in a while. I just, it doesn't happen very often, but most of the time I buy them at the, the, the Goodwill. I buy them at the um, Books Revisited. That's that little bookstore I was just talking about just a second ago. I buy them at um, just several, several used books uh, in, they're hardly ever new. I guess that's the, the long and short of it. And so you, you'll see all kinds of different types of books, and they'll be in different um, conditions. Uh, not very often do they come in brand new condition. But that's okay, because I like my books. Uh, here is Revel in Washington. My mother had actually found that book for me. Uh, Revel in Washington, 1860 to 1865 by Margaret Leach. Uh, it's supposed to be a pretty famous book. Now this one, um, my mom had gotten it, and as you can see, the spine of this bad boy is split in half. I'm almost scared to try to read it, but one of these days I am going to read it. Um, I've I've seen it several times in the sources page in the back of books, and so it is on my list to read. I'm just kind of scared to read that one because I think it'll fall apart. Um, I'll probably have to get a new one before it's all said and done. Uh, here's another book by Eric Foner, uh, Short History of Reconstruction. And um, this is supposed to be a top-notch Reconstruction book. As I said, uh, you know, there's Eric Foner. As I said, he's a, a great slavery historian and historian on the, on the Reconstruction era. Just got that one. Actually, I got that one new, uh, and I got it from the uh, 
Oh, what is his name? His, a People's History of the United States. I'm going blank on his name. Uh, Howard Zinn. Yeah, Howard Zinn, his website. And um, I did, I taught a little lesson in, in class and I sent in to, the, to his website and they gave the book to me for free. That was pretty awesome. It was brand new. So, anyway, uh, here's a book for Cause and Comrades, Why Men Fought in the Civil War by James McPherson. Says this was the winner of the 1998 Lincoln Prize, and that's a that's a uh, pretty short volume. I'll probably read that one sometime this spring, I imagine. I like McPherson. I loved his <clears throat> uh, Battle Cry for Freedom, one of my favorite books. Now these books down here don't necessarily have a certain order. I I do have them somewhat lumped together by, you know, the, most of those were Civil War, and then I'll get into, over on the other side, I'll have some, some Revolution books, and then I got some Washington in the col uh, colonial period, and then I got Lincoln. Um, so they're, they're kind of lumped, but not necessarily. They're kind of kind of here, there, and everywhere right at the moment. Um, when I had my library before, I had them all sorted by author and the ones that I had not read. And I had them by author last name from, you know, A to Z. And then what I was starting to do, because I had the, a little bit of room to do it upstairs, so what I started to do is as I read the book, I would go find the call number, and the ones that I had read were in another part of the room on a different bookshelf, and I'd started putting them in, in order by the Dewey Decimal System. Yes, I am a nerd. I can't help it. <laughs> but... Uh, that became kind of hard, like I said, when everything got moved to the upper room when we had my, my youngest daughter and I lost my upstairs library room. Uh, it kind of became hard to keep things sorted, but that's okay. Someday I'll have it again. But uh, next book on the list is Seeds of Discontent, The Deep Roots of the American Revolution, 1650 to 1750 by J. Revel Carr. Mm, I love that painting on the front. That's pretty cool. But uh, that looked like a good book. I got that one at Books Revisited. Excellent. And Books Revisited is basically, it's hooked on to the St. Joe Public Library. And when they go to sort through their books and discard them, they send them down there. And you can get paperbacks for a dollar, hardbacks for two bucks. And the great thing is, those books that they get rid of, a lot of times, at least the nonfiction anyway, they are in almost brand new condition. They have hardly been touched. And, um, I mean, it's not like getting them at the, the Goodwill and stuff where sometimes they get kind of beat up and they're smelly and stuff like that. The ones that are coming out of that library are usually in really, really good condition. And they also have a lot of people who donate books to that, uh, to the Books Revisited. And so they get a, a large variety of different types of books in there. And I like going in there because you never know what you're going to get. And and just kind of neat. Anyway, next one on the list is The Beard's New Basic History of the United States uh, by Charles A. and Mary R. Beard. Um, this one, I do believe, it's another library book. Yeah, and I got this from our high school library when they discarded it. I was like, holy moly, that's a, that's a book that I see in the sources page on a lot of uh, a lot of books here's one I bought brand new myself matter of fact I haven't even taken the sticker off I probably ought to do that but friends divided uh, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson by uh, Gordon S Wood and basically you know it's kind of funny I I was reading some stuff by Joseph Ellis and he kept talking about the letters between Jefferson and Adams and I I quite literally said man I wish somebody would write a a book based on just the letters and I thought man that's something I should try to do and then sure enough within the next couple months Wood came out with this one I was like geez Louise I'm always late <laughs> can never think of anything fast enough but um, anyway this I'm sure is going to be an awesome read uh, very excited to read that one next book on the list is uh, Joseph Ellis's American Sphinx the character of Thomas Jefferson and uh, I have read that. That it's been a while since I read it, but it was a really good book. Um, won the what is that? The National Book Award. 
and I, I really like Ellis. Ellis is a top notch historian. He writes in a uh, he writes in a way that the American public will read it. I mean, it's not a he's academic, but he doesn't write academic. Like it doesn't go over everybody's heads, and and it's very friendly. Uh, they're they're what I call friendly reads, where everybody would like them. All right, so when anybody's ever asking for a book suggestion, like I have a teacher at school I've been working with that he's been asking for suggestion of books, and I've been just giving him Joseph Ellis to read left and right because I know that most people will enjoy his reading. Now, the next one I got is kind of a doorstopper. It is a, geez louise, it's a, what, a 655-page book. But I found this one, where did I find this one? Was this one at Books? I think this might have been a Books Revisited also. But it's uh, The Memoirs of My Life. Uh, ex uh, John Charles Fremont, Explorer of the American West. And it is a beast. But look at that cover. Isn't that cool? And we talk about uh, John C. Fremont when we talk about the, the elections right before the Civil War. And so I thought, man, that'd be a good book to grab. And so I did. And I got my money's worth because it's heavy. This was a, a book I got for with my Christmas money, A People's Contest, The Union and Civil War, 1861 to 1865 by Philip uh, Paludin. Or Paladin, Paludin. I'm not sure how to say it, actually. But I've seen that one. Sorry about the glare. Um, I've seen this one in the back of the sources of books. And so I wanted to get that. And then I've got The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt by Edmund Morris. This is a, a trilogy. And this is the first book of the trilogy, Winter of the Pulitzer. Um, pretty sure it was this book. Not the, not the author, but the, the book itself. I mean, obviously, still the author, but it wasn't for another book. I'm pretty sure it was this one he won it for, but uh, that's supposed to be a good one. It's it's pretty hefty itself. And then I've got the second book in the the second volume in the series, Theodore Rex, by Edmund Morris. And I've come to really enjoy reading Theodore Roosevelt. I'm I'm super excited about the Presidential Library that they're they're getting around to building up in the Dakotas. I got a teacher friend and I, we're going to go up and, and take a look at that, and we're pretty excited about that. And then sticking with Teddy Roosevelt theme, here's a book, uh, Panama Fever, The Epic Story of the Building of the Panama Canal by Matthew Parker. Now, uh, this one, again, I'm not real sure. I think this might have been a Books Revisited also, but uh, it looked really good when I was I was teaching a early, or no, 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 United States and world affairs so basically foreign diplomacy of the united states i was teaching a class on that and one of the things that i kind of centered in on to begin with was theodore roosevelt because he kind of put us on the national scene and uh that panama canal was that was pretty interesting when i was uh, learning learning on learning up on that didn't sound right <laughs> uh when i was teaching myself a little bit more about that i found that to be a very interesting uh topic Here's another one, uh, the era of Theodore Roosevelt, 1900 to 1912, and this does not have a dust jacket, but uh, by George E. Mowry. And again, no dust jacket, sorry about that. And then we're down to the last two. Now this one was from our bed, or the public library, they were getting rid of it. And it's called Know Your Ancestors, A Guide to Genealogical Research by Ethel Williams. Now, it's, it's, a, it's quite a bit dated, but I really like genealogy stuff. And so I have a whole collection, like a, two full shelves completely loaded with uh, genealogy stuff and a whole <laughs> cabinet full of my family stuff upstairs. And, and uh, so this kind of just went right along with that genealogy collection. It's very interesting stuff. And then here's the last one for this shelf, The Way It Was, 1876. And this is from Susan Hilton. It's kind of got an interesting cover to it. Very colorful. Kind of unique. And I think it's just all around the year 1876. This was a, another discarded book. Um, I picked it up because it looked interesting. I have a lot of troubles throwing books away. And so if it looks halfway interesting, I usually end up keeping it. 
much to my wife's dislike. <laughs> but um, anyway, this, uh, this book tube is the first of the shelves that I will be filming. I'll film the, the rest of them slowly but surely and uh, I'll get them out there so you can take a take a look-see and you tell me what you think. Tell me if I did okay with all my books or, or if I didn't and uh, yeah. So you have a great night. Till next time. Bye.